So, um, what do you guys think about the idea of Sambas? They've obviously made a bit of a um, re. They've obviously had a bit of a resurgence over the last year or so. It feels like uh, maybe the last couple of years. I'm gonna say specifically, maybe due to ASAP Rocky wearing them a few times. I think from some of the style pages that I follow, especially places like um, Who Is Celebrity Vice, he's been posting a few images of ASAP Rocky wearing them. Maybe I think a year or two years ago, and there was a lot of comments on the in uh, on the pictures saying, "Oh, what are those shoes?" and people tagging them because I think he just swapped out the white laces for a pair of neon laces, kind of. Brand in that look back and um there seemed to be a lot of hype around it right i'm assuming because it's just a, an og that you can buy in line adidas it makes more sense and plus the samba is actually a legitimately interesting shoe to wear i'm a big fan of it myself obviously coming from the uk because of its links to um terrace culture um in football and soccer or maybe as you call it in america and um but generally i've always been a fan of the kind of um astro turfy um soccer football trainer in general i remember the times when people used to wear the nike fcs is it fcs you remember those from back in the day they were kind of um an interpretation of an indoor um soccer shoe um that you'd wear maybe for five a side that was maybe re that was reappropriate for skateboarding which made sense considering the fact that those shoes would need a lot of grip um you know um when you're kind of playing soccer indoors so they kind of reappropriated those and made them um you know um the perfect companion for grip tape and shit i think i remember a time when alex olsen was wearing a lot of those kind of astrotypy type shoes so the samba kind of sits in that same sort of category very thin model and um, probably one of the only models i think of that sort of silhouette that i can actually wear with my giganto feet um even though it's quite narrow at the front it's still quite square it's got kind of a rectangular -ish sort of um the toe box at the front where it kind of tapers in it's not as pointy as maybe an agdas gazelle which kind of allows for the much movement but ever since i've seen kind of is that rookie wear them begrudgingly i've decided not to buy a pair because i just found whenever those guys wear those type of things it just kind of you know increases the value exponentially and obviously you then get the annoying um um instances or encounters that usually occur when you wear those kind of things and people automatically say oh you're wearing the asap rookie shoes isn't it or oh, you're wearing the asap nas shoes and as soon as i saw actually asap nas wearing a pair of shoes who tends to be the kind of the second early adopter of those sort of things if if rocky starts wearing kilts nas will start wearing them second which then starts to permeate the general population because i think a lot of people for some reason follow him and really have kind of resonated with his style even though i kind of think it's a little bit haphazard but here you go what can i say here am i here I am sitting with a what five dollar Pink Floyd T-shirt and um, criticizing some someone like Asap Nest style, but al alas, we are on the internet. I'm allowed to say what I want and what I please. Um, and yeah, so I guess um, this um, Twitter profile that I follow, which is pretty good, it's called Streetwear Night Live, and it says the following post here: "Said Ada Samba hype is real. Um, Nas really is the source of this one. What's funny is Jerry Lorenzo, who commented on Nas's first pick and then went out and got his own pair. Of course, naturally, don't you can't really blame Jerry Lorenzo. He is now, you know, essentially part of the Ada's team." He's got a very senior role there, a part of the ADAS basketball division, which I covered before on the podcast. So that makes complete sense. And as well, considering the kind of shoes that he likes, the ADAS Samba will kind of fit into the kind of Jerry Lorenzo style of things, right? It's quite thin profile. It allows that kind of loose lacing thing that he does with his shoes. I can Im imagine him kind of maybe using the Samba as an inspiration for the other models that he's done for his own brand, Fear of God. So that's a bit of a side to kind of put, a bit of out of to put in that respect. And as well, they haven't included Asa Rocky, who I think was the first person I I saw from this whole contingent of people who actually wore the samba it says here and sean are jumping on the hype i guess sean is the guy from what Sean Wetherspoon, I guess, Wetherspoon, how you pronounce his name, are jumping on a hype to try and stay ahead of the game, but it's a bit too obvious. Staying ahead of the game. Now, staying ahead of the game is a really interesting phrase to use in sneaker culture because I think, in my opinion, it's really easy. I think for the most part, people that buy sneakers or are into fashion, into streetwear, are quite lazy with their options of, of shoes that they wear. There's so many amazing shoes, especially from the big free brands that exist that aren't the most popular ones that could easily be incorporated into most people's style that would obviously fit what they wear a lot more than air jordans and air force ones and yeezys and whatever every typical thing everyone else wears just kind of deviate even um even m in the air max range alone there's so many other shoes outside of the air max 90 air max one air max 97 that could be worn that are very overlooked so i think a lot of these guys even though they try to stay ahead are really behind the curve in general because i remember when i was growing up the whole idea behind being a sneakerhead was kind of uh the ability to kind of source out and pick out the uh, hidden gems in terms of what is available in terms of sneakers right going out there and finding the stuff that people don't necessarily wear but they're making it hot yep that's what i remember 
Um, so the people, things that people are doing at the moment, I think are a little bit irrelevant. Let's see the pictures of ASAP Nasweno himself. That's the first picture of him, full head to toe with them. Looks pretty cool in that outfit. Joe Lorenzo wearing them, of course, in his signature loose lace fit style, which makes sense and really works with the stuff that he wears. And then another picture here of Sean Weatherspoon putting a, an image of him kind of with the box on there. So I think in general, it makes sense that they do this. For Adidas, it's a pretty cool tactic. Um, they've probably reached out to these influencers and sent them free pairs and just told them, hey, don't mention that you got this from your plug emoji insert there and just kind of post them and just kind of do an organic kind of reach that way. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what they did with the Adidas um, Stan Smith uh, original, right? I remember somebody I was involved in it once told me about the whole idea that came around them and why, they, how they basically were able to kind of reintroduce them to the market and kind of, I did, I think they did them in like three grades or two grades. I think there was a GR model and an OG model that was basically rolled out and it was basically done in a very organic way. Reach out to people who would kind of resonate with a shoe, which is a far better way to do the whole influencer activation thing. Don't just send them out to everybody that's got a million followers, but actually send them out to people specifically who would wear that kind of shoe. Um, and that obviously was allow, allowed it to kind of grow organically and actually influence culture in the right way and get people to actually purchase them when they are available for sale because sometimes you see a lot of people get stuff seeded to them it then goes on sale and it doesn't really sell that well because people don't care about the model but actual influence is the ability to go out and seed it to particular influencers who resonate with a brand who have some affinity with the shoe itself or sneaker culture in general who then can able to showcase it to their fan base so that when the shoe is available and made for purchase they can go out and purchase them in droves and then we have a second uh quote here no, we have another image here, actually. Um, or oh, let's read the quote, actually, from Streetwear Night Live. He says the following, let's not forget that these little hype bursts will always come and go, and that doesn't really define an item in, in that very moment. I just report what I notice and see and how it affects people's purchasing habits. He says here, continues, if I'm being honest, I'm down for the standby hype, and I hope that ADAS is doing this internally by sending free pairs to influencers. It's time for ADAS to stop pumping superstar collabs and work with different silhouettes because they have the potential, they lack the execution. Of course, I think ADAS probably has one of the most overlooked archives in the history or in, in the entire sneaker industry to be honest right I think even stuff like brands like Puma have really amazing things in their archive that they aren't they're probably unwilling to reintroduce to the market because for the most part people only know them for one model maybe the Puma Clyde or whatever it may be um, they're kind of branching out a little bit now you feel like with the J. Cole stuff and some of the other basketball shoes but loads of these brands kind of rely too heavily on their retros and their stuff that they're, they're kind of legacy items and don't maybe go well, well they're iconic legacy items i don't go for stuff that maybe is overlooked but needs to basically be reintroduced slowly i think new balance do that really well they have a very clever way of reintroducing models that aren't necessarily that well known um into the in, you know into the current consciousness by lining up with different you know brands you look at the Amelie Leandor um, and New Balance 5550s I think they were 550s um, they were kind of an overlooked model that kind of got reintroduced and now you're seeing GR models slowly but surely kind of come out into the market collaboration with size with that kind of malarkey and I think Adidas needs to do this more often uh, but again I think maybe in a race to compete with Nike they kind of rely too heavily on the iconic um G and the iconic original silhouettes and they don't maybe embrace more of these models that could be uh spread out to a lot more people because i think in, even in the uk samba sell really well because they'll sell really well week in week out i'm sure if you went to a place like jd sports or footlocker they'll tell you they probably get through a ton of those shoes on a weekly basis so if they were able to kind of line up with the right places they'll be able to do that properly uh, it's another post here it says pharmatics co-owner of De uh, brain dead uh, big up Carl Eng. He says he had posted a pair of Sambas. This is confirmation that ADAS is trying to bring the hype back by sending free pairs around. I wonder if they have a collab on the way to kickstart the hype. Of course they will. They, that's what they always do. Um, uh, Nike kind of have a, a similar approach at the moment where, not similar they're actually, they sometimes do the whole like high fashion collaboration. They'll kind of reach out to Undercover, Comme des Garçons, um, Sakai, a few other people, uh, Junai Watanabe uh, to reintroduce a model. And then as that gets reintroduced on the runway, that gets put out to the tier zero stores and then from then on that model then goes out into gr and then or not gr you know whatever that other lane is underneath tier zero and then from there it goes in gr and goes into the current rotation but yeah i'm down with the samba hype i like it personally for me now that i've seen these guys wearing them i'm definitely not going to wear them myself because i just like to kind of deviate from the um you know the, com the the kind of popular convention that exists out there but i'm excited or interested to know what you guys think are you are you super involved in the samba hype are you getting involved as well or do you think like myself that it's maybe a little bit overcooked now and it's a kind of you know 
know, beating a dead horse already, even though it's only been, what, best part of a year or so, maybe just underneath it. Let me know in the comments down below.